Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 25 of the video series in which we program an entire video game from scratch in the C programming language using very few uh, libraries and no gaming engines, not using Unity or Unreal or SDL or any of that stuff. This is all pretty much from scratch. So last time we left off, um, it was a pretty exciting milestone actually. We just got done playing sound. Uh, and I'll show you where we left off, uh, where we have our main menu here. And now it plays a sound whenever we change menu items. And by the way, my Xbox controller is still um, attached and it works fine. So today, um, so today I'm just sort of winging it because where we go from here, uh, we could go various directions from here. Um, obviously, I want to have these menu items uh, do things, and I'll start with the easiest one, I think, which is the exit button. So, um, actually, the first thing I'm actually the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start Audacity. And I'm going to I'm going to open this sound, and I'm going to I kind of want to reduce the volume of it. So I think if I go amplify and then tone it down. to export All right, that had like no effect, unfortunately. There we go. I just wanted to um, make that sound not so loud because uh, you're going to be hearing it a lot 
and I don't want it to get obnoxious. So if you recall, when we have a menu, and right now we only have one menu, which is the title screen menu, there is a member in this data structure, uh, in the menu item data structure for a function pointer. And so I've already created some functions here that are just uh, to get us started. And so let me see here. Let's go to process player input on the title screen. And uh, actually, before that, let me go to process player input, which is right here. OK, we don't have yet, uh, we don't have a choose button. So we better make one. Better make one and uh, see escape, debug, left, right, up, down, debug. Okay. Okay. It is down, and we also need to make a. choose key was down. Input dot choose key is down equals async key state. So on the keyboard, I guess it's going to be enter or return. Yeah, that's, I think that's the best key for it. And then if you have a gamepad attached, it will be Should the choose key be? X. Or A. I guess we'll I guess we'll do A. That's really annoying. Okay. Was 
was Okay, that looks right. Now we're going to go to title screen. If game input dot choose key is down. And game input dot choose key was down equals false. Then we are going to execute title screen. Um, we're going to execute the selected item. This should be dot items. There. Okay. So if it hits right here, I want to. I mean, I could just I could just send the window a quit message, right? I think that will work. Let's try it. Choose key is down and not choose key was down. It did not work. It might not be WM quit. I think I had this problem last time. WM close is what I need to send. Menu item exit. Let's try WM close. There, it works. So when I hit the exit key, let's go back just so that is uh, really clear what's going on. Yeah, so it's simple. Um, if whatever key I've chosen for um, to be the, the choose key, uh, so on the keyboard it's enter, on the gamepad it's A, and if it's down, then I'm going to execute the function pointer for the selected uh, menu item. Piece of cake. Okay, I'm um, going to uh, gonna switch gears uh, here for a second because this is bugging me. Uh, this is from last time where it says uh, different const qualifiers and it's because I'm using read file to populate data directly into game sound buffer dot p audio data and p audio data is a pointer and it is it has the, um, it's a constant, it says it's const. Uh, it has a constant uh, keyword or qualifier on it, uh, which means that it isn't supposed to be modified. Um, thing is, is like, okay, the code 
as it is works perfectly fine and it will always work fine forever so there's not really a big reason to change this code other than um, to get rid of this warning so do we want to do we want to temporarily disable the warning no I think it's probably better if we go ahead and fix this so uh, here's how we're gonna fix it we're gonna go back up to the top of this function and we're going to make a new pointer we're gonna call it audio data Okay, first thing we're going to do is we are going to change this part right here. Audio data is now going to be the return at ad the address returned from heap alloc. Audio data equals null. Okay, and here we are going to data. I'm going to replace that with audio data and then finally we are going to set game sound buffer dot p audio data equals audio data. Rebuild See if it works. All right, works perfectly fine, and the warning is gone. Now, back to what we were doing. Um, so, I don't actually want, I don't actually want to leave the exit button like that. What I actually want to do is, what I actually want to do. is make a new sound. So what's it going to sound like when we select something?
right, now I have to make a new game sound. Sound G menu choose. All right, that was easy. That kind of reminds me, though. If I go to menus, item, I think the menu item should probably have another member uh, for whether it's enabled or not. I, yeah, it should. Uh, we'll come back to that later. Okay, menu item, exit. Okay, so I basically just did this just as a test to see if it would work, but it isn't actually what I want to do. Um, I wouldn't, I don't want the game to exit immediately as soon as you hit the exit button, um, because imagine if this RPG, if this is an RPG, and imagine if you put, you know, 12 hours of progress into it and then you accidentally hit the exit button and everything goes away um, we definitely don't want that to happen so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change I'm going to change the game state game state equals to my uh, exit yes no screen and I probably need I need a I think I should actually oh, uh, probably gonna I'm gonna change the name of this to current game state because I'm going to also have a G previous game state Probably going to end up also having a desired game state and the reason why I think I'm probably going to have a desired game state is because essentially I'm going to want to do uh, transitions from one game state to another um, so instead of when you whenever you like change into a different game state it doesn't just immediately flip to it but instead the screen will do some sort of graphical thing. Either it could just fade in, or it'll. Um, I, I mean, I could like make some sort of like pixelated uh, transition. It's like a PowerPoint transition when you're moving from one slide to the other, right? Uh, there, there's got to be some sort of smooth transition in there. So um, instead of instead of changing the game state immediately, there's going to be some sort of third state where you're transitioning between two states. Um, so, game state. Previous game state will be 
actually. Previous game state will be the G current game state. And the G current game state will go to exit yes no screen. So I've changed the game state, so now the uh, none of the controls work anymore because I haven't I haven't programmed in all of the uh, switch case uh, stuff whenever the game state the current game state equals um, exit yes no. So I need to stop there, and then I need to I need to make a. Uh, I need to make another menu for this thing. I'm going to call it exit yes or no screen. Um, yes. Item exit no. Okay, this is going to be yes, and the x coordinate is going to be game resolution width divided by two minus. It's three characters long. The word yes is three characters, and each character is six pixels wide, divided by two. And uh, where on the screen is it going to be? Uh, vertically? I don't know, so I'll just choose 100. And then it needs a function pointer, which is going to be menu item exit yes no. Yes. Okay. Let's make sure this is all correct. Looks correct to me. Two characters. It's going to be at a a y coordinate of 115, and it's going to point to menu item underscore exit yes no underscore no. I need to make these two functions. Y menu item yes no. Go make these functions. Let's keep them all together. And I know ahead of time, um, menu item, okay, so are you sure you want exit? Yes, is going to be, that is where we're going to actually quit the game. G game window, WM close. W param, no L param. That's all there is to it. Now, if the player says no, then I'm going to do
then I'm going if this if the player says no then I'm going to send them back to their previous game state and previous game state is going to be exit yes no screen Okay, now we need to render from graphics. Draw, exit, yes, no screen. Which doesn't exist yet, so let's go make it. I want to finish making uh, making the rest of these things. Okay. Um, G and I exit. Yes. No items. It's a pointer to an array of menu items. G and I exit. Yes. Yes. And. And then finally, you'll make the menu itself. G menu exit yes no equals the title of the menu itself will be Are you sure you want to exit? And I think this is selected item, which is going to start on zero. Count of GMI, exit yes, no. Items, which is two. And then finally, yes, no items itself. Okay. Now I may actually want to change the initial uh, the I may actually want to start it on the the choice for no uh, because again to prevent accidents to prevent someone from accidentally clicking yes when they didn't actually want to exit the game okay that does it now I'm going to copy this stuff out of draw title screen And again, I'm going to explain what local frame counter and last frame scene, those have a purpose, and I will get to it later. Uh, and then we're going to blank out the screen every time, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to print, we're going to draw um, G menu exit yes no dot name.
We could do a for loop, but since there's only two items in the menu, I mean, probably don't need to. We could just do, we just print yes and no. Again, I'm just trying to center these things. Finally, we need to draw the little cursor to represent which, whether yes or no, is currently selected. Exit yes, no, dot items. Okay, that should do it for drawing. Now we need to implement uh, the player input. So, process player input. We'll make sure there is a case for exit yes, no, which is right there. PPI, exit yes, no. Which doesn't exist yet, so we have to go create it. Void, void. And the code for this code is going to be pretty much the same. Ah, we can get rid of this now. So we no longer need the escape key to immediately close the game, since now we're going to have an we're going to have a fancy official uh, exit confirmation screen. Pretty much going to be the same code, isn't it?
Okay, I think that's it. I think we have everything. Let's see, let's run it and see what it, see what it looks like. Works perfectly. Let's run that again. So I hit en enter. It goes to, are you sure you want to exit? Awesome. That works so well. I'm quite pleased. All right. So what else do we want to do? Um, oh, I did want to talk to you about um, this since we we uh, covered all of the sound uh, sound engine stuff in the last two episodes. Um, it did remind me that I wanted to show you something that I'm not just um, you know crazy when I told you that I, I was making uh, four source voices for sound effects so that you could potentially hypothetically play four sound effects at the same time and then we have remember we have that loop that increments we increment um, number of we increment the uh, index of the sound effects source voice we increment that every time. Uh, let's go to play sound. Every time we play a sound, right? We increment it, and then whenever it reaches the uh, maximum number of source voices, then we loop back around to zero. We cycle back to zero, and so we have sort of this rotating system of source voices that are ready and waiting to play sound effects. Um, it's like a four-cylinder engine, I guess you could say. Um, so I'm going to try to show you real quick. I'm going to demonstrate what happens if we did. What happens if we don't increment G sound effects source voice selector? If we don't increment that every time we play a sound effect, then that means every sound effect will be played on the same source voice. It means every sound effect is going to get played on. Um, GX audio sound effect source voice zero. And so what does that sound like when that happens? I'm going to hit play and this is going to be um, this is going to be difficult because the game runs at 60 frames per second, but the recording is only running at 30 frames per second. So I'm not sure how well it's going to translate because this is kind of fast but what's going to happen is I'm going to hit these keys really fast and I want you to pay attention to what it sounds like uh, when all of the whenever there's only one uh, sound effects source voice to play all your sound effects okay ready here we go okay did you get that like it was still the sound effects were still playing even after I took my hand off the keyboard right get that all of the sound effects are getting queued up one after the other so one sound effect can't play until the previous sound effect has finished they all get they all get in a long queue and that's why it was still playing even after I took my hand off of the keys uh, because all the sound effects were queued up
by cycling through uh, multiple source voices, you don't have that problem because now you've got basically four channels that you can play on, and that's just it's not an issue. All right, I just wanted to show you guys that, so we can now take that off. Um, I added the rest of the game states to the switch case blocks just to get rid of the warnings. Okay, we need to do an opening splash screen. We need to get in. We need to do transitions. Uh, we did lower the volume of the menu navigate sound. Okay. Obviously, don't need to do that anymore. Okay. So what I want to do is. I want to make another ver another global. I don't know about this uh, because this variable is for um, basically if I flip that variable to false then the game will exit immediately uh, because this is the variable that controls our main game loop in uh, WinMain, right? But I want another variable that represents whether the player actually has a game started or not. And I don't, I'm, it's kind of confusing because somebody reading this code is not going to know what that means. So I better put some comments here. So for example, if I play this, uh, right now it's false because I haven't actually started playing a game yet. And the reason why I feel like this is important is because uh, resume shouldn't be here. Uh, resume doesn't make any sense because I haven't started a game. So we are going to go to in render frame graphics. We are going to go to opening drop title screen. Wondering how I want to, how do I actually want to fix this? If um,
going to change the starting item from 0 to 1. Okay, now we only have one more problem we have to address uh, is to not move to that item if a game is not in progress, which is probably somewhere in process player input title screen. So you can only get there by pressing the up key. Okay, that works. Um, I don't like this though because it is not apparent as to what the purpose of it is. Um, so I need to change that. Or I could just comment it. I mean, it works. Um, not like terribly proud of it, but it does work. All right. So that was some. That was pretty good progress. Um, we could probably. I think next time uh, we could probably implement um, a few more game states uh, and. We need to we need to implement like the splash screen. We need to implement um, the option screen, uh, and then when we um, hit start new game, I basically want to go to uh, a screen where you get to name your character. Because like in all um, in all those old school Nintendo games, you got to name you know your own character. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have a screen like that, and then. Um, from there, it will transition into the uh, overworld, and then we can basically start our game. Um, and we need to do scene transitions, too. Um, so that's, that's where we're going, and, you know, we're making, we're making steady progress. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, and as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget that there is a GitHub repository uh, to go along with these videos. I keep it updated um, in step with these episodes uh, so that you can follow along at home. Um, what else? What else? Uh, oh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave your questions and comments on the video. And uh, it doesn't have to be about the current 
your question doesn't have to be about the current video. You can ask questions about any video in the entire series. Um, and then I will talk about your questions in an upcoming episode. So I think that does it for today. And as always, thanks for watching. Uh, let's talk to you next time. Bye.